28th of December 2022. Hello everybody, Sergey Baklikov, Baklikov Live. And uh, we are again in the town of Pushkin, which is now considered as a part of uh, St. Petersburg. It's just in the south of St. Petersburg. In fact, the southern suburbs of St. Petersburg. And also, this place is known as Tsar's village, Tsarskoye Selo, or like Tsar's settlements. Because literally, back in the days, it used to be the village right next to St. Petersburg, in the south of St. Petersburg, where the imperial family lived. Right now, I came here from Vitebsky railway station, one of five railway stations in St. Petersburg and the railway station which used to be the very first railway uh, station in uh, St. Petersburg constructed in 1837. Uh, the thing is, the very first railway in Russia was the railway from St. Petersburg to here. Yes, that's for, for Emperor, okay? So like for a comfortable travel from here to St. Petersburg and vice versa. 23 kilometers by this straight line. Yes, it's mostly like, you know, straight way, direct way from uh, Vitebsky, Vakzal, Vitebsk railway station to here. Now it's a part of the uh, railway to Vitebsk, to uh, Belarus. Actually, Vitebsk, it's uh, the uh, um it's the town of belarus okay so um it's not the first time i'm coming here uh an average once in a season i'm taking you here the last time i was in pushkin was in the beginning of september now that's already the end of december and let's enjoy pushkin in the uh, winter 2022-2023 only three days to the new year let's enjoy pre-new year's Pushkin come on here wasn't the snow now it seems like a uh, very small snow status but, you know, I would be happy if now the snow would go because it is always looks more majestic when the snow falling down. Okay, so right from here, from the railway station called Tsarskoye Selo, it's by the way still called Tsarskoye Selo, yes, historically one of the very first railway terminals in russia i came here for only 30 minutes 30 minutes and 48 rubles which is 70 cents okay it's pretty cool okay now from here traditionally i will take a walk through the street which is called shiroke shiroke means wide so now this street it was considered as wide back in the days. Unbear 13, Marsha, Marsha, Liminal Space, Ronald Godier, Brian Holland, George Berdas, Stacey O'Shills, Zipper Neck, Ashok Potu, Yusta Foster, Eleanor Lagerholm. I say hi to everybody, Greg McMillan. Then Jerus continue joining Oleg Zal. I absolutely love Pushkin. If you remember, I told you that I consider it can be a really great place to retire. We are your uh, fans ah. of, your, of your YouTube channel. Awesome, awesome to hear. It's your uh, second um, uh, trip 
to the Pushkin? Well, actually, not the seconds. Uh, maybe already five, even, ah, even six times. Ah, uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So here I've met. Uh, here I've met the guy who watching who watching my channel. I think that Pushkin is really a great place to retire if you're living in Saint Petersburg. Just uh, think for yourself. It's only 23 kilometers from the center of St. Petersburg, not even from like the edge of St. Petersburg, uh, but uh, from the very center of St. Petersburg, only 23 uh, kilometers, but here already absolutely different vibe. Uh, less people, way less people. In terms of the houses here, mostly such a maximum three storage residential building. Beautiful older buildings. However, the real estate for this reason is not that cheap here. In average, it's $2,500 per one square meter in the town of Pushkin. Sometimes it can be a pain in ass. Sometimes it can be a pain in ass to go from here by car to the center of St. Petersburg, especially in the peak hours, but it's always easier and never jams. Um, if you will take a ride on the uh, suburban train in many intersections here you will not find the traffic lights because exactly here in pushkin traffic is never is never huge you know and let me tell you something let me tell you something Even though in all Pushkin the population is about 107,000 residents, however, exactly here in its historical part, historic part, um, it's not that much. It's not that much residents on one square kilometer. Uh, right now, I'm going to the very center of the city. To the central square where is the catherine cathedral and to uh, catherine park where is located catherine palace the catherine palace where is now there inside um, the uh, legendary amber room hello iron r glad to see you again Manuel 103 everybody Continue joining this awesome walk. This awesome walk in the town of Pushkin. Meanwhile, now her husband Timur, well, my brother-in-law and uh, their daughter Samira. They are on the way to St. Petersburg for the first time for the last four years. I'm going to celebrate the new year, not in my hometown of Ufa, but here in St. Petersburg. Here is also a nice park. I forgot how it's, it's called, but it's just a nice park. I've noticed many kids just enjoying their time. The natural landscape allowed to have such a snow hill here. And it's pretty good. <clears throat> a very green town in the summertime and it's always cool here 
in the winter time too, especially uh, after the snowfall, when all the trees covers with a beautiful snow. Hello, good fella. Bridge and Tunnel Scooter Club. Yes, Pushkin is great. Now the town uh, is called Pushkin because the great Alexander Pushkin, one of the most significant Russian writers and poets, the lights of Russian literature, he used to live and study here in the Lyceum. He started here uh, from 1811 to 1817. Hello, Betty Power. Hello, Ploikin and IMIX SPB. Unfortunately, the town of Pushkin suffers pretty much during the uh, World War II, during the siege of Leningrad. Already in September of 1941, it was occupied with the Nazis and liberated only in 1944. By the way, it's uh, one month until one of the most significant days for St. Petersburg, 27th of January is one of the most significant days, if not the most significant. Well, at least for those uh, people of St. Petersburg who are living here in uh, not a first generation, 27th of January. 27th of January refers to 27th of January 1944. It's uh, a complex liberation of the uh, siege of Leningrad, which has lasted for almost 900 days. Hello, Todd, Todd Smith. At the 27th of January, uh, always there's the ceremonies, the memorial ceremonies in St. Petersburg. Um, I was taking you to such a ceremony. The ceremony is starting in the morning. Uh, first of all, it's like the people are going to the uh, um, to the church, uh, church, uh, not church, uh, to the graveyards. the building of the uh, administration of the town of Pushkin. Joan Johnson. Hi and Merry Christmas from the Faroe Islands. Hi to Faroe Islands. Yes, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you and everybody. It's only uh, three days to the new year 
in the 10 days to another Christmas, Orthodox Christmas, which we celebrate here in Russia. At least it's uh, Orthodox parts. I will not go, I better will wait for another 35 seconds. There we go. Well, I'm just on the uh, way to the main square, where is the Catherine Cathedral and Gostinny Dvor. An old mall. Hello, Alexander Kazachunek. Hello, everybody who continue joining my channel. Walking in the town of Pushkin today. The town of Pushkin officially was founded in 1710. That's the time when the Emperor of Russia was Peter the Great. And so the lands of nowadays uh, Pushkin used to belong to Peter the Great. And Peter the Great in 1710 just gave it away to Alexander Menshikov, one of his closest associates and the very first governor of St. Petersburg, which was founded in 1703. So uh, Pushkin or Tsarske Selo, officially it's only seven years younger than St. Petersburg. And in 1712, he also gave uh, the lands of nowadays Pushkin to his wife, Catherine. But the main development of Pushkin or Tsarskoye Selo, the way we know it now, started after the death of Peter the Great, when when his daughter Elizabeth, Elizaveta Petrovna, Elizabeth of Peter, Petrovna, it's a patronymic, means the daughter of Peter Petrovna, the daughter of Peter, Peter, Peter. She started the development of this place. She like reconstructed the palace invited an architect Francesco Bartolomeo Rastrelli, the same architect who designed the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg. And then that was continued by Catherine II, our Empress Catherine II, Catherine the Great.
Alexander the third and Nicholas the second, the last Russian Tsar. They also pretty much love being here. In the town of Pushkin. Let's say Nicholas II was spending more time here than in St. Petersburg. In the end of 19th century, the town of Pushkin was the most electrificated city, or should I say town, in not only in whole Russia, but in, in whole Europe. Hello, bro, Dean. Hello, everybody. Continue joining this awesome walk. Look, I see recently wasn't much snow in the town of Pushkin, same as in St. Petersburg as well. I see here was the snow, but everything, most of the snow melted or at least on the sidewalks cleared off by the uh, municipal communal service I remember a year ago I was taking you here when it was snowing and it was so beautiful. Everything literally was in a white winter wonderland. Прекрасно, прекрасно. Hi. The girls there said hi to bloggers okay hello swelling sausage and robbers lovindia Even though the town was damaged pretty much in the years of World War II, however, still we can find a lot of historic buildings here. And this is pretty great. You see, in the historic city center of Pushkin, the buildings are like maximum Three, having three, three stories. Hello, Mary Kate Golden, Susie Koo.
магнит, магнит косметик, and uh, just a regular магнит, магнит, one of the largest chains of grocery supermarkets. Вот. Александр Пушкин. And gastronome number 13. Grocery store. I believe you can notice that the atmosphere is really way quieter here, way quieter in Pushkin. As I said, great, great place to retire for people of St. Petersburg. Song Sop Talk, you're welcome. Enjoy it. Yes, uh, I think that Pushkin affected not only the Russian literature, but the world British literature. Hello, Artyom Korshunov, Theo Isaac and Ildar Akhmetsin. Marsha, Marsha, see you. Thank you for watching. Awesome. And you remember how also it's beautiful here in the autumn time. I was taking you here for the golden autumn. It was still beautiful, but I think I was late for about a week 
it was still beautiful but i think that i was need to come just a week earlier well next year i will come here one week earlier I want a Lada Nissan. Lada Nissan is not exist. They used to do. Uh, they used to make uh, Lada Chevrolet, uh, Chevrolet Niva, but never there was Lada Nissan. Damn, this guy really interrupts the quietness of this town. That's interesting. I was in about 70 citizen towns and no matter, no matter where I was, there is always a one idiot who are listening to the crap inside of his car and making it so loud they somehow want everybody to listen to that okay they want everybody to listen to that and uh, they are thinking somehow everybody must love it but in most cases everybody just hates it for example, I'm also playing the music, the house music, but I'm having it just on my channel, okay? And you really need intentionally to come to my channel in order to listen to my house music live stream. By the way, now I have my music house music live streams where I'm spinning the house music vinyls on the separate channel, which is called Baklakov DJ. Yes, now I have the channel for the house music only. It's called Baklakov DJ. Everybody who enjoys my house sets here. Now you can enjoy it on Baklakov DJ. I will not have the house music sets here anymore but I have it just on my separate channel now Sergey last night's house music set was awesome big time yes that probably was one of my uh, best house music sets for the last year uh, because somehow in my yesterday's set I decided to place only pure very pure house okay it was painstakingly selected pure house the real house the true house okay look ladies and gentlemen look we now came to the uh, well geographically the center of the historic city center of Pushkin there's the cathedral square and uh, St. Catherine Cathedral which you will see now Dodo Pizza Pizzeria uh, many places cafes and restaurants in this area and this is Gastilny Dvor Gastilny Dvor it's uh, that's how the malls back in 18th, 19th century used to be called in Russia. And most of Gostiny Dvors, like the trade yards, they are still active. Okay. 
And now this is the beautiful Catherine Cathedral, St. Catherine Cathedral. It is here since 1840. Well, it actually was demolished in the early Soviet days, but now it's completely, it's completely rebuilt and looking the same as it used to look before. Okay, Gastine Dvor, look. It's kind of huge. And there's also the territory inside, the market inside, more like a very traditional market. You know, with vegetables, fruits, and all this stuff. the restaurant called Hlebnikov. You have no idea how great it is to have a dinner or lunch if you will get lucky to take a table next to the windows. So then you're having a meal um, on the background of St. Catherine Cathedral. And here is the place where usually I order some coffee because they says they say that they have a good coffee okay I trust them and uh, I order and usually it's really good coffee they appointed me yet okay let's order uh, freaking coffee Здравствуйте. Необходим, мне необходим латте большой. А, окей, окей. So I need latte. I need latte. Just a pure latte uh, with some sugar. Well, usually, usually I uh, take latte with no sugar, but sometimes I I feel like I want a sugar. Maybe uh, it's when I'm feeling like I want some power, okay? The sugar is giving you some fast power, okay? Fast power. Latte is the best. Well, it depends. Uh, some people are thinking that the real coffee is only like a black coffee. It's like, I even heard such a большой латте. Большой латте без всяких добавок, только сахар. Ну, это сахар сам, да? Okay, I ordered latte and waiting for it. Okay, so I even heard it like why the hell to drink coffee at all 
if you're not drinking just a pure black coffee, you know, for example, I don't know, like Americano or Turkish coffee. Big grody holder. Hi, beautiful fucker. Yes, uh, Big Glory Holder always coming in and saying uh, like hello beautiful fuckers, but pretty often it never comes through because YouTube automatically stops it and only then when I'm watching already uh, the records of the stream, I see that it was stopped. You know, one of the prob one of one of Disadvantages, one of not many disadvantages of Prism Live Studio, the third party application that I use for streaming, is that here all the messages that are like uh, getting um, stopped by the YouTube, I can't control from here. I can't see which messages uh, never came through the filter. In the uh, YouTube application, I was able to see, like, okay, so there is such a message and approve or not so do you want it to go to the chat uh but here i can't see that but youtube application i mean like the official youtube application it's crap it's crap because it's allowed to stream only in 720p which is hd and here i can stream in full hd which is uh 1080p Another thing is that in the official YouTube application, I can't use wide angle lens camera. And here I can use wide angle lens camera. Mm -hmm. Спасибо. You see, this is now wide angle lens camera. Okay, there we go, dudes. Got a coffee, and now we'll go to Catherine Park. We actually will not be able now to walk through the whole park as we are making in the summertime or even in an awesome time because you see that park is now looking exactly the same as it looks uh, back in 18th century so there is still no lamp posts and uh, there is now no lighting um, only some lighting around the uh, uh, Catherine Palace I got coffee in a wrong throat. <coughs> uh, teenage, teenage, teenage wasteland thanks. I'm a photographer, wondered what you were shooting with. Your holiday streams have been absolutely stunning. 
Thank you for appreciation. Well, I stream now with just iPhone 13. Just a regular iPhone, not a Pro. Um, and yes, I use uh, just a Prism Live Studio application. There was the problem with Prism Live Studio with the stability, with the stability uh, about a year ago, about a year ago. Um, but uh, the last, for the last time, uh, the stability is unbelievable. I mean, the problem with Prism Live Studio was that when you was losing the connection, for example, like a bad LTE somewhere, for like more than 30 40 seconds then that's it so um somehow your live stream was finalized okay and uh, you had nothing to do with that nothing but just to start the new um live stream okay but now now this problem is gone i remember that even in the summer time when i was driving um, around Russia and if you remember I was driving between the cities and sometimes sometimes the uh, um, connection I was losing the connection like for a couple minutes for several minutes sometimes even like really for long however however uh, the uh, live stream was never finalized so they somehow um, fix that problem irinar sent the super sticker in amount of 1999 thank you very much iron glad to see you again it's been a while i saw you but uh, i hope you watched all my recent streams from kazan nizhny novgorod moscow Vyborg. um uh, afterwards afterwards when it was comfortable for you why are the windows so high because here i believe they are mostly for the lighting for the lighting distribution not for like a really like the window like a traditional window just to watch uh to look to look uh after the window <clears throat> what's too busy with holidays we'll watch later okay okay but believe me believe me those streams were awesome and also some just videos for example, in Kazan, when I came in Kazan, uh, same as to Nizhny Novgorod, I was streaming in the nighttime, the regular time, like now, but also I was coming by day just to film, just the video, just the video, just a walking video, no comments video, uh, just uh, to give the vibe, atmosphere, ambience, Ally and Truth Seeker 666. Yeah, hello to you too, Mohammed Saad, everybody. Yes, it was totally awesome. And uh, in 2023, of course, I will continue the road trips especially since now more people are joining a membership of my channel and uh, as i told you before 100 percent of the revenue that goes from membership a uh, membership uh, it goes for the new road trips but this year was kind of good in terms of the road trips if you remember the big road trip started in the middle of April of this year, it was started at one of the most northwestern points of Russia. 
in Akola Peninsula, Murmansk region, in the village, fisherman village called Tiriberka. From Tiriberka, then I uh, drove 100 kilometers to the south from there to Murmansk, the largest city beyond the Arctic Circle in the world. Then to Olenigorsk, the city of iron ore miners. Then to Monchigorsk, the little town where they are making nickel with the purity of 99.9% .9 of purity. Um, almost nowhere else they are making nickel with the purity of 99.9%, .9%, okay? It's Monchigorsk. After Monchigorsk, I went to the town of Apatite, Apatite, where they are uh, digging the apatites, you know, such a minerals that are used for mostly the agriculture. Then from Apatite, I went to the town of Kirovsk, where also they uh, dig the um, apatites and other minerals. And there's also a huge uh, ski resort called Big Woods or Balshoy Vudiavr. Amazing ski resort. I was taking you there. Also, there's they have the airport, a very small airport. That was funny when I came there just to watch, just to look at that airport. Okay, because I wanted to see like what is what is what is freaking what is freaking the airports in the town with the population of only ten thousand uh, residents okay but it turns to be uh, kind of nice little airports but i came in a moment when there was like almost the only flights and uh, it's like the boarding was finished in a moment when i came there and i got inside and uh shortly they told me okay um we are closing and I saw how they like literally closed the door and uh, uh, just like locked the door, okay, in that airport. Then I went to the town of Kim. Kim. Um, Kim. That's where was the, uh, um, how to say, the transit points transit point for the prisoners of Gulag back in 1950s. Um, there was the Gulag in Solovetsky Islands. It's like in the middle of the White Sea and there was the transition points and came. Then I went to Kandalaksha where they have the hydroelectric, electrics, very powerful hydroelectrics, which are taking the electricity, uh, thankful to a uh, fast stream of Neva River. Not Neva, but Neva, Neva River. <sighs> next thing, next thing, it was the uh, town of Belomorsk. It's like the White Sea town. It's literally the school. It's literally uh, Belomorsk. It's like re literally the White Sea town. And uh, what's interesting there that there in the Belomorsk is the beginning of so-called the White Sea and Baltic Canal. Can you imagine this is the canal which is last for more than 200 kilometers and they are constructed that for like about two years, okay? Uh, I mean, that was unbelievable. The canal, just think about it, the canal which is connecting the White Sea and Lake Onega. Damn, damn. But... Um, yeah, such a record terms, such a record terms of the construction back then were possible, thankful to the usage of the labor 
of, uh, you know, um, over 100 cell phones of prisoners. And that's still active. I was able to film, I was taking the uh, drone with me. I was taking the drone with me and I was making a lot of aerial shots. And I filmed like that first gate, the beginning of the White Sea and the Baltic Canal, also known as Bilamur Canal. And uh, finally, in that part of my road trip, I came to Sigeja, the town of Sigeja, where they have a um, paper mill, paper mill. And that was really interesting for me to see the trucks with a special kind of, how to say, uh, carriage or how to say it. Uh, which is like special for uh, transportation of the woods because actually they were bringing the woods there uh, that's a uh, paper mill working there 24 7 it's uh, the main enterprise in the town and they are burning the paper there the, um, I mean the woods there to make the paper all the time and there's such a um, specific specific uh, spirit smell there all the time and that was interesting well it's not like something disgusting just spe specific then if you remember again i was like uh, just uh, driving from saint petersburg to ufa it's uh, traditionally uh, was driving to uh, veliki novgorod novgorod the great the first capital of Russia, the town founded in 859, yes, more than 1000 years ago, that's where Rurik came, the beginner of the dynasty of Rurik's. Then uh, Tver, Moscow, Nizhny Novgorod, Kazan, Ufa, uh, Tavtimanova village, and uh, then also the trip to uh, the south. For the first time ever, I was taking you to the south. Um, through, at first from St. Petersburg to M11. M11, the toll road. The toll road from St. Petersburg to Moscow. And then M4, M4, another federal highway which goes all the way to the south like strictly to the south take a map and see it goes strictly to the south m4 and uh, goes through such a big towns as voronish voronish that's where yesenia lives uh the girlfriends of ronald which is always who, who is always pissing him off. Then Rostov on Don, then Krasnodar, and uh, finally there goes the turn to uh, another highway, which already goes all along the uh, uh, southern Black Sea coast. And that's where so-called Big Sochi begins. That's right after Drugba. Drugba, Krasnodar, Drugba, and uh, there goes the split. Uh, so that's uh, uh, where we are moving to the uh, east, to the east. Thomas Allen, thank you very much, to the east from M4. And uh, that's how we are driving like more than 100 kilometers all around, uh, all along so-called Big Sochi. The thing is, Sochi itself, it's only like considered as like the center of Sochi. But there's also many other towns which also considered to be a part of Sochi. Sochi officially is like uh, 100 kilometers long. 
and I was filming, I was filming all of that. I was filming uh, the road. When I was driving M11, M4, I was just streaming. But yeah, of course, there in the mountains, when I was driving um, along the uh, serpentines, curvy roads uh, on the uh, coast of Black Sea, of course, I was just filming the video and upload it later because um, almost no internet there. Dudes, meanwhile, look at this. Meanwhile, we came to Catherine Garden, a Catherine Park, Catherine Park. It's a really huge park, huge and beautiful park which is in the summertime opens for free i mean the uh, free entrance in the winter season but you see for the reason it having a historic look historic look uh for this reason for this reason uh there's no lamp posts only some lighting next to the catherine palace one of the most significant palaces in russia and of course the most significant palace in uh, the town of Pushkin, even though next to Catherine Palace there's also the Alexander Palace and Alexander Park. Uh, by the way, Alexander, Alexander Palace was opened not too long ago uh, and I was not taking you there yet. And look, this part, this part, it's in Russian language called Fligel. Not sure how, how to say this in English but it's like this additional additional parts that's where was the lithium where in the periods of 1811 to 1817 alexander pushkin uh studied and now the uh, town named after him the town of pushkin because pushkin after all turns to be one of the most significant one of the most significant russian writers and poets ever 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 so um we can assume that they that pushkin got a really good education starting here in the tsarsko sirsky lithium as i told you as i told you uh, the architect of Catherine Palace, absolutely the same architect who designed the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg. Um, the, actually, the main palace of Russia, uh, Francesco Bartolomeo Rastrelli. This style in architecture called uh, Baroque, and uh, to be exact, this is so-called Elizabeth Baroque a kind of baroque which was especially popular in the years of of ruling of elizabeth petrovna the daughter of peter the great uh, peter's daughter started to rule russia She, by the way, was one of the one of the most mercy um, rulers of Russia. It's like almost nobody was executed while she ruled Russia. Then the power transferred to Peter the Third, and then to his wife Catherine, Catherine the Second. Operation Zenith. Thank you very much for the super chats. Uh, here is saying that it's said that you can get insights. Actually, you can get inside. Можете зайти внутрь, и у меня есть видео, неоднократно я снимал, 
Просто нужно... You just have to search for Catherine Palace, Bakhlykov Life or Catherine Palace, uh, Real Russia. And that's how you, you can get insights, uh, you can watch insights. I was here, I was, uh, I was, I was walking as all inside of the uh, palace uh, in general. Well, how to say like all the rounds? Actually, here is many areas of the palace which are still not available for visiting, but most of it, including, including uh, the legendary famous Amber Room. Amber Room was gifted to Peter the Great in 1716 by Friedrich Wilhelm, the Prussian, 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 uh, king but it was stolen during the uh, occupation of nazis and and uh, they still never found that but in 1980s 1980s they started well painstakingly uh, how to say uh, the recreation of it and finished in 2003 now the amber room is here again Yes, for, for more than 20 years, uh, they were rebuilding that. The problem was that, uh, the problem was that they are, they tried to reconstruct it the way it used to be in an or, in original. Okay, but now everybody can see, you know, uh, here is uh, such a uh, principle of so-called enfilades. What does it mean enfilades? Look, when you go to the second floor and you just start walking and look, you can, you're, you're going all along the windows. And uh, so here you can just walk all along the windows and uh, there's like the rooms goes here, 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 here. And uh, that's how you're going through the through the whole rooms, okay, including a uh, big hole, big hole. Um, so you're just watching, uh, walking through the enfilade, and that's how you are comfortably walking through each room. It's not like you know in our apartments where we have um, an isolated rooms, or let's say, I think most people in the houses having uh, the uh, isolated rooms and in order to get to uh, another room you need to get out of one room and then to enter another room but here you just like walking all the way um, next to the windows and then also the same on the other side of the building and that's how you just like going by round through most of uh, through most of the palace You can just search for Catherine Palace, Bucklick of Life, and that's it. You will find my live stream from here. Or I don't I don't even remember. Maybe it was maybe it was a frigging vlog. Uh, the reason why, the reason why, uh, still not, uh, still not everything is available uh, to visit here, is that believe it or not, but 80 years after, well, to be exact, 78 years after the town of Pushkin was liberated from the uh, Nazi occupation, well, they are still still they are still uh, how to say recover some of the rooms here because you have no idea in what a condition it used to be well it was damaged pretty much pretty much fortunately it wasn't like totally ruined but damn it it was damaged big time big time and look, um, even though, yes, like most of, most of the palace uh, 
reconstructed, recovered, rebuilt. However, there is still some rooms they are working on. And uh, the problem is that it, it's, it, they are working on the uh, interior. That's the, uh, that's the hardest part, okay? I mean, like, it's pretty quick. It's pretty quick to construct the walls again, okay? Even with all that fretwork, you know, the columns, fretwork, all the sculptures, it's not a big deal at all. The windows. But the problem is that every frigging room there was pretty unique. Pretty unique. And, uh, like, on every room there used to work many different uh, architects, okay? I mean, look, if, uh, let's say, Francesco Bartolomeo Rastrelli made the design of uh, the palace in general, then uh, what about the interior of each room? Whoa, there were working different masters on that, okay? And now it's like really, really very painstaking and very professional, very professional and uh, very expensive work. That's why it takes so much time. Okay, look, uh, if you remember in summertime and even in the autumn, I was taking you all around the park. The park is huge, really huge. And uh, here it is divided on two uh, types. For example, here, here, you see, here we have more like um, manicured, such a manicured park. It's more like artificial. I mean, it's real, but I mean, it's like totally taking care of the gardeners, okay? And there, there, the other part is more like a wild, okay? Uh, when there is no gardener's work and it's huge. But for the reason here, everything the way it used to be um, uh, in the uh, uh, 18th century, they still have no any lamp post here and uh, there's just no light now. Only some light here, next to the Catherine Palace. Uh, by the way, um, the construction was about the same time when they constructed the Winter Palace. It's uh, 1752, well, 1750s. Francesco Bartolomeo Rastrelli, an Italian architect, works on it. As I told you, this style considered as Elizabeth Baroque. Look, they here, they even have the palace church. Yes, the church inside of the palace. Natural versus manicured. Yeah, and here it's like both, okay? This part next to the uh, uh, palace, it's manicured and uh, there's more like a natural park and both are great, both are great. Also, now here we can see uh, the sculptures. Do you remember here was the sculptures, like the ladies with boobs, with boobs? Now you see they are winterized, such a boxes, such a boxes, where somehow they are warmed up or, or something. Uh, because, yeah, they are sensitive, the sculptures are sensitive for the uh, winter winter temperatures and the affection of winter ну что вот look вы вы видите awesome awesome the heritage the heritage of uh, the imperial russia Catherine Palace, Catherine, Catherine the Seconds. Yeah, Catherine also loves to hang out here. <coughs> and uh, the uh, ensemble continues because right next to the Catherine uh, Palace, there's Alexander Palace and Alexander Park. But for, but for, for look, if actually, uh, the Catherine Palace restored already a long ago, most of it. Then the Alexander Palace was finished just like about a year ago. And uh, I wasn't there yet. And I'm gonna take you there in the uh, in, in spring, I, I guess. In spring, summer. 
because it's interesting. Yes, it's interesting, dudes. <clears throat> you know, in the pre-coronavirus times, um, it was really hard to get to uh, Catherine Palace mostly because of Chinese tourists. I mean, believe me, when the Chinese tourists were coming to Russia, whoa, I mean, like thousands of them were coming here every day. And uh, even for the reason that was so many Chinese tourists and a huge um, a stream of, of, of people, they never allowed to photograph in amber room now you can photograph an amber room because it's not because you know amber room is so unique that you can photograph it it's not unique come on there is like loads and lots of photographs but it's because because once more people so they were needs like uh everybody move like move all the time because when here's a lot of people it's first one group moving and the next group is right next to you and everybody have to move all the time and for the reason that amber room is one of the most beautiful rooms in uh, the uh, palace catherine palace i mean everybody was starting photograph and uh, it is actually something what's um, slowed down the traffic okay and uh, for this reason so they like prohibited to photograph just in order people not to photograph and not to stay for too long in the amber room but now it's different now it's different now with no chinese tourists i mean you're just coming and you're just walking and uh, photograph as much as you want Well, especially now in the winter. <coughs> Ronald Godier, this is what I said. This is what I said. I said that the real Amber Room was stolen during the Nazi occupation. But in the 1980s, they started the restoration of it which has taken more than 20 years amber room was opened here only in 2003 because it's a very painstaking work to recreate the amber room um, exactly as it used to be and the problem is that there's a lot of amber and every amber having a different tint and uh, imagine how much of work it is just all the time just by photographs to try to find the right tints okay for each part of the amber room whoa but that's impressive that's impressive even that's not the original amber room that amber room we have here now that's totally impressive and i have even um a vlog just search for amber room real russia baklikov and you will find my video. What is the reason for today's calm in Russia? Well, it's always calm in the town of Pushkin. Always calm. calm. And I always saying when I'm here that it's a great place for to, to retire here. And most of intersections don't even have, um, don't even have the traffic lights. Because even though in the town actually living 107,000 residents, but uh, most of them are living not in the historic part. I gotta Google it now. You don't Google it, you just search it on YouTube. In the YouTube search, Amber Room. Uh, Real Russia, Baklikov. <laughs> and there I have a very detailed, very detailed uh, picture. Very detailed picture, uh, not picture, video, video of the Amber Room. Okay, 
so I left the territory of the Catherine Park and again can show you this Fliegel, in Russian language Fliegel, Fliegel. not sure how it will be in English okay the parts of you know such an additional parts of uh, Catherine Palace that used to be a lithium where studied Alexander Pushkin the light of Russian literature I remember that I filmed the Amber Room here in 2020 in the beginning of 2020 as soon as uh, as uh, Russia closed closed uh, the entrance uh, for Chinese because of the coronavirus but it wasn't that big yet in Russia and uh, nobody even back then yet believed it will take so long time for all that um, coronavirus how to say all that coronavirus wildness and yeah uh, Catherine the palace lost a lot of customers and in order in order to attract more of locals they even started saying like now now it's allowed to photograph in amber room yeah because uh the as i told you the prohibition to to to, to film and photograph in amber room was just because uh it has slowed down the traffic and traffic was huge whoa the traffic was huge so now this is znamenskaya church whoa I see they are closed that now for the restoration but just I was here just in uh, if you remember September during the uh, golden autumn or like the beginning of October and it was yet not in the scuff foldings but this is the oldest stone building the church uh, built here in 1734 okay so here came the time after almost 300 years for the restoration of that church <clears throat> catherine palace and buckley of life dated 11th of april 2021 yeah but I believe there's also a video from the February of 2020. Is there still a lithium inside, Sergey? As far as I know, no. Now there's the museum. Museum of Alexander Pushkin and uh, now in this square where I'm sure Pushkin Pushkin uh, used to be often because look it's uh, right on the backyards of the Litsu look so Pushkin personally used to be here and this is historically so right place to make the uh, uh, Memorial to Pushkin, Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin. Sergeyevich, it's patronymic, so his father was Sergey. Now in this square, especially in the summer time, people continue chilling. Yes, chilling. People are sitting on these benches and they are chilling. You hear me? 
You hear me? And look, so here is already the territory of Alexander Park. Alexander Park, and there's another palace, which is Alexander Palace. In Alexander Palace also used to be uh, Nicholas II and uh, the, his family uh, also left to hang out there. And uh, it's interesting that uh, Putin, now when he is in St. Petersburg, he also loves to hang out more like um, uh, in the suburbs of St. Petersburg in Constantine Palace. By the way, the last two days at the 26th and 27th of um, December, Putin was here, Putin was in St. Petersburg. That was an official or so-called informal meeting of the former Soviet Union countries, of the leaders of former Soviet Union countries. Giacomo restaurants, some fancy restaurants right next to Catherine Palace. So uh, Putin was in town the last two days with Lukashenko. Lukashenko was also coming uh, from the leader of Bel president of Belarus. And you know, they went to Russian Museum. They had a uh, meeting at the Russian Museum. On the backgrounds of the uh, photograph of, of the portraits of Emperor Paul the first. Hello, Sean Arts, Harry Potter, Vladimir Litus. It's so peaceful here. Yes, Harry, you are right. And I hope you guys really enjoy this. I hope you really enjoyed today's walk. I continue bringing you the uh, variety as much as I can. The variety of Russia. Snowy Wonderland, Robert Lovendia. Yeah, but it was even uh, greater a year ago when I was coming here with my wife and it was even more snow and it was snowing. Wow, I mean, the snow always gives like plus 100 points to the picture. Hello, Michael Zwino. Say hi to Natalie. It was nice to see yesterday you enjoyed the house music set. I myself enjoyed my house music set yesterday. I was really satisfied with it. For if not 100% then for I guess 97% for sure. Even though some mixes we are kind of dirty. <laughs> but you know, it's life. It's life. I'm playing live. 
because uh, that's that's actually another enjoy to play live even sweating came for the house music as well when sweating came to my first live stream on my new channel I told him that he's been warned you know sweating sausage was warned I mean he was saying some crap about my house music on this channel and okay okay so it was okay more or less because okay this is like the channel initially people i mean like the house music is not what people initially were subscribing for on baklakov live but now that's a baklakov dj house music only and there there will be zero tolerance there will be the zero tolerance for those who will saying crap because here I've made it 100, 200% clear. It's only about the house music. And if you don't like it, just leave. Just leave, okay? Just leave. Or you just will be, you know, like uh, kicked off just by me. Is that the house you had coffee before? Um, I think it's the same chain. Um, yes, I can say this is the same chain, but it's a different place. Hey, Sweating Sausage, let me tell you, you are walking by the edge. By the way, I was surprised today when I saw that now the suburban trains to Pushkin goes exactly every 10 minutes. Wow. Cowboy Roy Rogers, hello Cowboy, hello Liza. So now, little by little, I'm returning to the Cathedral Square. It's like the main square here in the center of the historic center. Such a relaxing walk, Stacy Oshield saying, it's good, enjoy this, enjoy this. I want you to enjoy nothing but to enjoy tanya grass it's your mom yes the town of pushkin this is tarskoselska gymnasia iskustv the uh, arts gymnasia okay but let me tell you that in in simple words it's just uh, the music school it's interesting how now all the just the music schools are getting renamed to the uh, um, art schools, okay, art schools. I don't know, I like just the music school better, the children's music school. The museum for friends. The restaurant calls the museum for friends. 
in such an awesome house of 19th century. The 19th century wooden house. Гостиный двор. The 19th century mall. In the town of Pushkin. It's uh, St. Catherine Palace again, uh, Palace Church, St. Catherine Church. You've gone full circle. No yet. I will finish the circle when I will come back to the railway station. Yes, uh, the most comfortable way to get from here to uh, the center of the city of St. Petersburg is with a suburban train. Only 29 minutes and that's it. 70 cents, 29 minutes and that's it. Never jams, never. Orthodox Christianity. Awesome, awesome, right? Whoa. Whoa. Two thousand twenty three, yes, two thousand twenty three is coming only 
three freaking days left. This is so-called the house of creativity. It means the house for children's creativity. It's just the place where after school the uh, kids may come and to get so-called additional education. That's the education which is not uh, mandatory in Russia. It's only like on your choice. And there's different kinds of, you know, sections, so-called sections. There can be a sports section. There can be something like uh, the uh, theater circle, like where they are playing drama, or maybe they are singing, or robot techniques, or so-called fast reading, or physics, mathematics, whatever, informatics, programming. High strategy battles, high Zangief, high everybody who continue joining my totally amazing stream in a uh, wonderful uh, town of Pushkin. Hi, Marcel. Uh, there's the police, which is perceived me now. But they won't see I'm just behind them. As we can see, the uh, public transportation, like uh, buses, also pretty much developed here. As uh, the buses inside of uh, the town of Pushkin, as the buses until the closest metro station, if I'm not mistaken, it's like until uh, Kupchino. I'm walking in direction of railway terminal but with a little bit different way I love this town ready to move in Ah, uh, no wonder, I'm telling you, this absolutely amazing town, and this is the closest suburbs of St. Petersburg in the south, just look at the map, 
It is now even considered as a part of St. Petersburg. Well, it used to be like a separate town of Pushkin, uh, Tsarsky Selo, like Tsars village. But now it's a part of like uh, big St. Petersburg, or should I say large, large St. Petersburg area. It's really quiet. It's next to St. Petersburg. It's only 29 minutes by suburban train from here. The suburban trains every 10, 15 minutes never jams, never. But for this reason, for this reason, the price for the real estate here on the level of uh, just the real estate in St. Petersburg, in average, it's uh, $2,500 per square meter. And I believe here in the center, in the center, in the historic city center, <coughs> it's even more expensive. Russia is still a, still a great country in terms of buying the real estate. <coughs> it's now might It's now kind of it's now already kind of pricey in a big towns. But in a smaller towns and um, in the, the countryside land and most of places still pretty cheap I'm returning to Shiroka Street. I'm almost next to Shiroka Street. I mean, I'm almost on Shiroka Street, which leads to the railway terminal. In front of me, the administration of the town of Pushkin. Meanwhile, it's nine o'clock. 
9 p.m. in the town of Pushkin. Let me check the tickets. Okay. 21.05. Definitely I will not have the time to get to that. Okay, 21.25. Good. So I have 23 minutes. 47 rubles, 32 minutes of ride. All right, I'm turning to Shiroka. Shiroka means wide. Look, back in the days, this, the street like this was considered as wide. It is now will bring me exactly exactly to the railway terminal In the peak hours, they have the suburban trains with the interval of 10 minutes. Now I see the interval a little bit increased, but still it's pretty good. The concentration of people here is great. For the reason, uh, not many buildings and even those which are here are maximum three floors. Not many people in the historic city center. That's why it's so quiet and peaceful. Whoa. I still see the kids in the park. The landscape here allow to have the natural snow hill now. Ryan Maring, thank you for super sticker.
Okay, let me uh, take a walk one of the courtyards of one of the courtyards of Pushkin. You see, it's now already nine o'clock, but enough of parking lots because I don't know it seems like maximum uh, 18 apartments here three hallways three floors And I guess uh, two apartments. On each floor. So it's like 18 apartments. And now the courtyards. Parking lots available. Even though it's already over nine o'clock where most people have to be home. Yes, that's how is the healthy housing looks like. Freaking Sean Annan asking me all the time where is wrong. Let me tell you once again, I am not his mommy. I have no idea where he is. Why don't you just uh, go to uh, his channel? Why don't you just come into his live streams and personally asking him where he is? Davis, you are delusional. Probably one of the most delusional people on my channel. I'm not his mommy. 
And this is funny how some of you guys asking me about like different people who ever used to be on my channel, like where they are. Come on, if they were on my channel, it doesn't mean I continue like following, I begin following them. Like for example, you're asking me, you're still asking me about like where is Oksana, uh, my wife's friend. Just because like over a year ago, she was making some videos on my Real Ratchet channel and you're still asking me where she is, but I have no idea. She uh, rejoins with her husband. They never lived for some time, but now they rejoins and I have no idea where she is. She is not even in St. Petersburg anymore. Or you're asking me about Ronald. All I know he's in Abhazia and that's it. Sean Annan delusional. Okay, dudes, dudes. I now came to the railway terminal of the town of Pushkin. The station called Tsarskoe Selo. So I have a plenty of time yet. Look, I have 12 minutes yet, 12 minutes, but I need to buy the tickets. I need to buy the tickets. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Так. Bog Gnome. Thank you for the super chats. Okay, paying. Uh, SMS code. Waiting for my SMS codes. Where the hell is that? That's it. That's it. So here is my tickets. Uh, here is my QR code, QR code that now I will use to go through um, such a scanner barrier there. I have 11 minutes. Uh, by the way, the application, it's official application of Russian Railways. And I buy all the tickets there. I have already all my data there like uh, pre-entered, already saved. When will you go to Ufa? I'm not sure, but I was in uh, Ufa for the new year for the last three years. Now I decided for this new year to be here. Okay, 10 minutes, 10 minutes to go. Coffee machine, winding machine, chips, sneakers, tweets, water. Uh, 
these are ATM machines. ATM machines to pay for the tickets. It's mostly for the suburban. Yes, it's for suburban train, but if you will need the ticket to the long distance train, yes, use that application in your phone or go to the uh, cashier. Also ATM bank machine. Bank machines, different banks, VTB, Alpha Bank, and uh, there's a waiting hall. Will you share New Year live from your home? I think so. Still amazing benches, wooden benches made of oak. And once we are in the town of Pushkin, look, here is the bust of Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin. Look, seems back in the days they used to have the fireplace here. Wow. Here and there. Okay, I have eight minutes. And let me show you one more wing, another wing of the railway terminal. Oh, look. the cafe awesome ceiling beer Nuggets, burgers, burgers. All right, all right. So now it's time for me to go to the platform. I just open up my frigging my freaking application here is the uh, barcode you see i open it up So, I'm on my right platform, platform in direction of the north, to the center of St. Petersburg.
Okay, only four minutes. I hope you enjoyed today's live stream from the town of Pushkin. Can we go on the train with you? Okay, I will get to the train, but then I will turn it off because the connection anyway, not gonna be stable. Okay, look, the train is coming because you hear that sound? So they are closing the, uh, um, the cross. You see, you hear the sounds? That's the uh, typical sounds to close the roads for the train rides so the train is coming Lynn Markwick you're welcome I'm happy to see that it was interesting for you Cowboy Roy Rogers, thank you for the wishes. Kim Lloyd George. Melissa Poison. I'm just going back home from the town of Pushkin. And uh, I'm going back with the fastest way. The suburban train now with no any jams just will gets me to Vitebsky railway station in the center of St. Petersburg. It's actually only 23 kilometers from here. Oh, you saw that? The guys are still running.
Следующая остановка – паровозный музей. Осторожно, двери выкрываются.